for you that's been here before. You know, we started a study in, in the book of Philippians. And uh, anyway, we're in chapter 2 today. So uh, let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, we just thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, to be able to speak with clarity to your people. And I thank you, Father, they receive it as, as adults and not as children. I thank you, Father, not one person will say this went over my head, but they'll say, I receive it, I'm understanding it, and I thank you, Father, that I, my life will be better tomorrow than it is today because of what I learned today in this meeting. Thank you, Father, that, that you have ordered this service today and help us, Lord, to follow your leadership in everything that we do and say today. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 All right, as I said last Sunday, who wrote book flip it. Oh. Paul. Paul, yeah, got it. Did you know where he was at when he wrote it? He was where? He was in jail. He was in uh, prison in Rome. And uh, he wrote it to the church at Philippi. And we got to understand something's taking place here. Us Western culture people, we don't understand the scenario sometimes of what was happening. Uh, they're about 10 years away from the, de the destruction of Jerusalem. The, uh, the abomination of desolation that Ezekiel and Daniel talked about. But he takes time out of, out of his being in a prison cell to write the Philippian church a letter of appreciation for what they had done. This church, more than any other church, gave to him time and time again and especially gave him support while he was in prison. Something else we learn about the New Testament, and it's important that we remember who each book is written to. Most of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was written. Jesus was speaking. He spoke to multitudes, but he singled out the, the Pharisees and Sadducees so often. You remember that. And... Uh, <clears throat> We get the book of Acts, we find that that, that, was, that book was uh, written uh, sharing about the, the kingdom of God and how it works in people, the laying on of hands and miracles and healings and so forth. But amid all of this crisis that's about to take place in, in their future, Paul talks to the believers here, or sends a letter to the Philippian church and encourages them and thanks them for their... For their uh, support. So we're going to start in, in Philippians chapter 2. Uh, as many of you know, I had cataract surgery Monday. I could see better without my glasses than I could before with them, except when I read. So Grandpa has arrived. <laughs> uh, if there be, therefore, in verse 1, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, any bowels of mercies, fulfill you my joy that you might be like-minded, having the same love, being of the same, being of one accord, of one mind. Uh, I want to just go back to a little bit of the last chapter. In the chapter 1, verse 28, he said, And in nothing terrified by your adversaries. What we want to learn here is, even though Paul is writing to a church, a real church, in Philippi, and he's encouraging them. It's not written to me, it's not written to you, but it's written for us. Amen. Let's say for us. For, for us. us. Okay, so we can glean from what he wrote to those folks, right? Okay. And he said in verse 28 of the previous chapter, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries. Now their adversaries in their day was the Roman Empire. Now, adversaries in our day, we have adversaries too. Danny just told about uh, his health, a reaction to the medicine and the, the, the stents or whatever they put in him. His body uh, kind of reacted to that and his flesh started falling off. He pulled his shirt up and he, he looked like, his back looked like he'd been in a house fire. Like it, it was just horrible. His arms and, you know, <clears throat> that became an adversary to him. Uh, you know, 
I can't imagine how it would be to be in a wheelchair like Elisa is all the time. You know? She has a lot of adversaries out there. You know, you'd be surprised if people wouldn't even open the door for somebody in a wheelchair. And she just kind of got to bulldoze through, you know? <laughs> so, uh, we have all kinds of adversaries. Danny was very aptly put it this morning. Fear is an adversary. Debt is an adversary. I remember when Charles Capps came to our church, he stayed in our home, and he said, you know, Mike, I was so in debt at one time, I couldn't even pay attention. He said, I would hear the preacher preach, and I would say amen to it, but he said, within seconds later, I'm still thinking about this debt that I owe tomorrow, or next week, that seemed impossible. And, and, and just, I couldn't hardly get past that. And I've thought about the same thing I remember in my life when I was so in debt, it was just hard to, to focus on anything but that. It became an adversary to me. It dogged my, tra dogged my heels all the time. So there's lots of adversaries. And, and so I take from this in Philippians chapter 1, verse 28, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries. I'm not allowing fear, I'm not allowing emotions, I'm not allowing anything else to become an adversary to me. Because the great I am lives in me, right? The great I am lives in you. I enjoyed Paige what she said. She started putting it on her phone. I am prosperous, I am healed, I am well, I'm this. You know the best time to be healed? Is when you're well. So often... I remember a guy in our church in Salem, he used to say, uh, the only people that don't appreciate good health is people that don't have it. Because people have good health, we just do it along, we kind of forget about it, you know? I was thinking about my cousin that just passed away. We'll be going to the funeral here in a week or so. Uh, how that all of a sudden, his wayward daughter is all of a sudden is wanting to pray for healing. And I'm all for that. But I thought, you know, sweetheart, you should have started months ago when Dad was still with you before he was in this, this situation. Uh, you know, God doesn't love us any less because we don't love Him. He loves us. You know, I've been, uh, I've been helping baby with a budget and we taught her about tithing. And uh, she said, Grandpa, you think God didn't love me because I wasn't paying tithes? <laughs> and I said, no, He loves you just as much. I said, and tithing is, is not a law anymore. It's a starting place. Because in the New Testament, they get, Jesus gave all. It's just a starting place. And I said, you know, God lo loves the guy under the bridge that's drinking shoe polish for a little alcohol content. He loves him as much as he does me. I just was privileged to have parents that taught me right, right off the get-go. You know? Uh, so, the love of God isn't, isn't a problem. It's sometimes we, we think that He don't love us as much because we don't do this, don't do that. But the love of God is always there. Yeah. We sang this song, I believe, this morning. His mercies are new. How often? Every morning. Every morning. His mercies are new every morning. Danny, I don't know if you remember uh, uh, one of the drivers over in Ottawa, uh, Hirschberger. He passed away you know, on his honeymoon. He passed away down to Royal Court. No, yeah, no, he's at uh, Grand Canyon. Yeah. Anyway, I was talking to him about the mercies of the Lord as new every morning. And, and um, so I hadn't seen him for months. And I was down at Cersei and he saw me and he jumped up on the side of my truck. He said, you remember what you told me a few years ago about the mercies of the Lord as new every morning? And he said, I said, yeah, I remember that. He said, oh, man, I'm so glad because I used them all up yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes we do, you know. <laughs> but God is so merciful. Don't be terrified by your enemies. Don't let anything terrify you. Be as Pete says, start putting stuff on your phone. Start hanging things on your walls. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm healed. I'm well. I'm whatever. 
I remember when I was pastor at Salem, you know, a small town, everybody knows about everybody. And I got a call from the hospital. They said, Mike, do you know so-and-so? And I said, yeah. He said, don't they live out there by you? And I said, yeah, just down the road. He said, would you hurry down there? So they caught the, the, the mother called me, called the hospital just a while ago and said, she's going to take an overdose. Send an ambulance out to pick me up because time you get here, I'll be dead. And she's got three little children. So I sailed out the house and, and she had fallen between the, 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 across the doorway from the kitchen to the living room. So the kids had to step over her body going in and out. I get out there for the ambulance or the corner or anybody and it was, it was trying to get the kids in the bedroom and just huddled around and praying with them. But I noticed in her house all the, the things she had hanging on the wall had to do with alcohol. All of her lampshades were made out of something to do with a beer can or something like that. And it was all dark. It was so dark in that house in the middle of the day. You know, people get depressed and just keeps crowding in on them and crowding in on them. You know, if we could just say, you know, I am the body of Christ. Satan has no power of me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I'm the body of Christ. Jesus is Lord. I am well. I am healed. Start declaring that while you are well. I am well. Hallelujah. Yesterday, I was down at the, my land at Harrisonville. Park was down there helping me unload some tires, big truck tires, and, and uh, ran around the pickup. And we, we put a tarp over these tires, and we, I got some old tires that Linda and I one, one year growed some potatoes. We just kept stacking tires up with them. <laughs> As the potato tops would get, we just put another tire up there, put more hay and more dirt on it, and uh, we just kept growing potatoes. Well, we didn't have no water down there, so we had <laughs> too big a job. We got all these tires now. Anyway, I said, Parker, let's put some of these tires on top of this tarp so it won't blow. And the tires had water in them and ice, and so I'm trying to get the water out of it, and I tripped and fell. I mean, I fell so hard, face first. And Leslie's heart, heart was, I don't know what he thought. He said, he got right down by me, so Grandpa, Grandpa, he said, just breathe easy. Breathe out of your nose. Don't breathe out of your mouth. No, no, no heart attack here. <laughs> I started laughing. I said, I think I'm all right, Parker. He said, Grandpa, I'm getting you up. It's all on me here. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't fall off a heart. And uh, I, I could have broken some bones. And I didn't. I mean, I got some bruises. <laughs> but I didn't break any bones. I'm so thankful. But, you know, could that be for weeks before that? I said, Father, I just thank you. I'm well. I'm healed. Yes. Absolutely. You know, thank you, Lord. Yeah. You, you've yeah. been with me all these years. You've protected me on the roads. I'm this and that. I just thank the Lord. And I just thank keep you, speaking God. positive things. I'm not terrified by my enemies. So Paul starts the second chapter. You remember, when he writes a letter, he didn't separate them with chapters. Huh? We do that. Translators do that. So, since we're not terrified by any, our adversaries, and really he's talking about the uh, Roman Empire here, but he says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, any bowels or the, where the seed of emotions are, seed of feelings are, fulfill you my joy that you might be like-minded, minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through what? Strife. strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. That's a takeaway we can take from that. That can apply to me today. That can apply to you. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. I'd put it this way in my, in my vernacular. I'd say, uh, don't be bragging on your stuff. Brag on somebody else's. That's why we try to bring up people here. And, you know, I know about my family. If you don't tell me about yours, I don't know about it. But when somebody gets a promotion, when somebody gets a, a, a raise, gets a new house, a new car, I bring them up here and say, let's applaud them. You know who? Christians are the worst people in the world for being mad and jealous because somebody else gets something that they didn't get. 
And we're trying to break that spirit around here. That we'll be excited when somebody else is promoted. Somebody else has got something a little better. Let's just thank the Lord. You know, if, if, we, if we try to build somebody else, God will build you. Amen. Amen. If we try to build somebody else, God will build us in, as we need it and as we uh, can handle it. Look not every man on his own things, but every man on things of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Now he's fixing to tell us what 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 the mind of Christ was. So he says, let this mind be in you. So I can take away something that, even though he's writing to the church at Philippi, I can see something in that for me. Here was the mind of Christ. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of what? No reputation. No reputation. I'm going to stop right there. Aren't we pretty... Uh, uh, what's the word? We're pretty prone to want our reputation to be good. And I'm not saying we ought to have a bad one. But I'm going to tell you one that, that, that I deal with always. All the time. I'm trying to get better at it. And I know you guys... You all are faithful and you all wouldn't think anything. But when I pray for somebody, I want to get to the point that I can just say, be healed. Now we don't do that. We generally shut our eyes real tight and pray this prayer. And it stems from something subconsciously. The preachers want your acceptance. And if we just say, be healed, we're afraid the congregation is going to think we're arrogant. But that's what Jesus did. But when there wasn't any crowd, he went away to pray. I asked Tina, is she already gone to work? She has to go to work early today. I asked Tina, I said, Tina, I'm not too good to come down here and put these, uh, these, uh, batteries in these mics or get out my guitar but I'm going to start delegating and I said would you come early <coughs> and put the, the batteries in the mics and get my guitar out and plug it in for me because I just want to spend time with the Lord before the service I want to get back there in my office and just pray in the spirit I don't want to visit before church I'll visit till the cows come home after service but I don't want to before service because when you talk a small talk at church before the service, for me, this is just me, it just gets me off of my flow. And so I just like to go back in the office and just pray in the Spirit. And then just come out and ready for the service start. She said, I'll do that. And she'd been very faithful to do it. And I appreciate that. I said, I'm not getting lazy. I can do it. Lenny can do it. But if you'll just do that for us every week. And she does it. And we're going to start delegating some other things as we go along. But just, just, uh, you know, I don't want to be able to just say, be healed. You know, Jesus said, uh, go your way, sin no more. He didn't pray a long prayer. The guy came with a withered hand. He said, he always asked him to do something to, to agree with him. He said, stretch forth your hand. Well, it's been this way for all these years. You stretch forth your hand. Just something simple. But I want, I don't want my reputation to be, you all to go off and say I'm arrogant, so we shut our eyes and we pray these long prayers. I'm trying to get away from that. I haven't yet. Still stumbling, right? <laughs> Tammy, <laughs> over that issue. Because I want my reputation to be spotless. I want my reputation to be good. Can you see my point? Because it would be easy for somebody to say, well, he's just arrogant. He don't want to pray for him. He don't want to pray for Mike. He don't want to pray for Doc. He don't want to pray for Micah. He just said, be healed about his business. You know, the lady coming, uh, as the messenger coming told Jesus, said, said um, Lazarus is sick and he's your buddy come and pray for him and Jesus stayed 
And the worry is that for a little while, a day or two. By the time he got down there, they'd done buried the guy, put him in a tomb, and he'd been there long <coughs> enough, he's starting to stink. Four days late, when Larry used to sing here, but he's always on time. But to show the power of God, he went ahead and he finally said, I know he's dead. Because they said, well, you think he's sleeping. That, that, there's nothing wrong with him taking a nap. Jesus said, I know he's dead. For your sake, I'm telling you he's dead. But he's not going to. You know, his sister said, I know, you know, whatever you say, Lord, that's what will happen. I know he'll raise in the last resurrection. Jesus said, no. And you know, I wonder if we're not still in that same mode of thinking. In the last resurrection, Jesus said, no. It's not of time anymore. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Yeah. I mean, still Christians in our Western culture are still looking for something to come down the pipe when it's in here. He's the resurrection. He's in us. Amen. He's in you, the resurrection. I don't have to look outside of there. The Bible says for to be carnally minded is what? Yeah. Dead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And you look up the word carnal, it means that which is external. And for many years, even as a preacher, everything I believed was outside of me. Everything I believed, God was up there, the devil was down there. Heaven up there, hell down there. Everything is outside of me. Once I understood the kingdom of God wasn't anywhere but sides in me and in you, it changed my whole mode of operation. I began to say, instead of saying, Oh God, oh, what you deal with there, Lord? I mean, Lord, just follow him all the way to work, Lord. I started telling God how to do it. You know? Once I understood the kingdom was in me, God was in me, God's throne, He lives where His throne is. And if He lives in me, His throne's in me. If He lives in you, His throne's in you. So start making proclamations. I am well. I am healed. As I said, yeah. the two greatest words in the English language is I am. Because that's the name of God. That's what He told Moses. He said, go down and tell him I am sent you. So, understand the great I am is in you. So, here He said, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. But He made Himself of no reputation. Took on Him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. <coughs> And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, any time wherefore or therefore is in the scriptures, you go back and see what it's there for. <coughs> so I put in verse 8. Here's what it reads in my Bible. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And then I put out there in a pink with my ink pen, I put, because of that. Verse 9, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. And I wrote in my margin of my Bible this week, his exaltation is the reward for his humility. Now, verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should what? Bow. Of things in heaven, heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. You know, one translation said, even those who've been dead and buried for years has to bow. And verse 11 says that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Remember, uh, Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. If the Bible says, and Paul said, that at the name of Jesus, that God had highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. Let's just take a little, little test here, or not a test, but uh, part participate with me. Somebody name a name. I don't care what it is. Cancer, that's a name. How many agrees that's a name? Uh, Paige, what's another name? Sugar diabetes. What? Sugar diabetes. Sugar diabetes. All right. Lupus. Lupus. Good. Anxiety. Anxiety. Mikey? 
Cancer, okay. Migraine. Migraines. Tumors. Those are all names. So when you say that name, you're not talking about a, a bump on your toe. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a headache. So everything has a name. Name me something else. Tumor. Tumors, okay. Depression. What? Depression. What's another name? Debt. Debt. Go close. Greed. Greed. Wonderful. Y'all getting better here. Fear. Fear. All of these are names. And it said that the name of Jesus, they have to bow. They thought Danny had lupus. Said it was uh, induced lupus. It had to bow. Yes. Now he's here today and his skin's looking better. Amen. <laughs> it had to bow to the name of Jesus. Paige with no confidence and thinks she's less than and everybody else was better. All of that idea and depression had to bow till yesterday she stood in here and taught on confidence. That's, that's a, a, a manifestation of that spirit that haunted her had to bow in the name of Jesus. So you think about that. When you come up with situations in your life, your kids' lives, your grandkids' lives, your neighbor's life, or just people you know. That's a name. It's named. It has to bow. But if nobody makes it, it might just keep going. Somebody's got to step up to the plate. And, and Paul said, let this mind be in you. That was in him. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's a hard one for us to comprehend that every tongue will confess. Because, you know, Christians are mean a lot of times. They want people to hurt. Y'all miss a good chance to say amen. amen. We know that isn't what we're supposed to do. But a lot of times it is. Verse 10. Well, let me see. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. I want to read something there. 1 Corinthians 15. <coughs> it says, in verse 26, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Now remember, Jesus, in His resurrection, He overcame what? Death. So that's been dealt with. For he has put all things under his feet, but when he has said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did which did not put all things which did put all things under him, and when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son of shall the Son also himself be sub subject unto him, that put all things under him, that God may be what? All in all. All in all. In how many? All. That God may be a little bit in a few people. That God may be all in some. God may be what? All in who? All. All. Hmm. Well, my doctrine didn't allow that, so we'd skip over that. Actually, what I did, I read it real fast and, and didn't even take time to focus on that. But when, when the Bible says, every knee will bow and every tongue confess, and then, he also says the Philippians church that God will be all in all. Amen. Hmm. Verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in, as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own what? Salvation, Salvation with what? Fear and, Fear and trembling. That doesn't mean be scared. Work it out. Knowing you want you want to please the Lord. Work out everything everything God does is in internal. The kingdom of God is an internal thing in us. Work that out. Another place talks about let your, your light so shine before men that they'll see what? Your good work. Good works don't get you saved, amen. It's, it's, uh, it's the blood of Jesus that changes our lives. But, once, once we're born of the Spirit, there are good works. That's a manifestation of something that took place on the inside of you. Do all, uh, verse 14, 
For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. God is not ever, ever wanting to do anything to hurt you. Okay? Do all things without murmuring and disputing. How can, what's our takeaway from that? Even though he's writing to the, the church of Philippi, how can that apply to me? Do all things without what? Murmuring and disputing. That you may be blameless and harmless the what? Sons of God. That's not by happenstance that it talks about sons of God. You know, s slaves took orders. And slaves got corrected. Now think back in Bible times. And it's still a little bit true today. But slaves had to take correction. Slaves did what the master said. But when sons worked, think about this, even though they worked for their father, they really worked for themselves because when dad died, they got it. didn't happen to slaves. But when sons work, and uh, I'm just looking at this word blameless, I, I, I don't know what translation I was reading it this week, but it said that you may be uh, not blameless, but uh, in other words, you didn't need corrected and harmless. The sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world. That you may be blameless and harmless sons and daughters of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. You know, it's very easy for all of us at some point in time to get, get drug into this world system. We all have our ideas about some of that. But... We're really like the light of the world. I was thinking this week, and last week, and the week before last, how that uh, so many people are demonstrating in the streets and, and revolting. And yet, see, CNN don't talk about this ever. Fox News don't talk about it. But you know, all over the world, and especially in the United States, you know, there's there's large groups of people, both Democrat and Republicans, that are praying for a nation. You don't ever see that on the news. You only see the revolts and the rebellions and, and all of that. You don't, but I want to tell you, there's good news happening. There's people praying and interceding. I, I was watching a group last night, and the building was packed, and these, these guys, I can say that I'm... I'm just guessing they were like 20s and 30s, was sitting just Indian style all the way up to the stage. There was no, no room to walk. And just, just listen to every word and taking in every word that the minister was saying and just talking about loving God. CNN ain't saying that. Fox News is not saying that. They show all that other stuff that we, we think the world's going to hell in a handbasket. I'm telling you, whatever that means. You know, I never did wonder what a handbasket had to do with it. But anyway, anyway, but there's just, and there, it's happening not over in the United States, it's happening around the world. People are praying. People are praying everywhere. You know, you know I'm just tuning into some of it on the internet and see, and it shows pictures of Thousands, not just a few folks here and there, but thousands of people praying. You know, God looks at the heart. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are to and fro in the earth. Looking for somebody to show himself strong in their life. There's one, there's Mike. He believes. I'll show him his life. There's another one, there's another one. His eyes go to and fro, searching for those who he can show himself strong. God is not a respecter person. He, he wants to bless everybody. But a lot of people get so caught up in the system. I mean, it, it, on both sides of the aisles, Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, all caught up in those things. And it detracts us from our mission. Amen.
holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I may not in that I may run in vain, not run in vain, neither labor in vain, yea. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all for the same cause you also do you joy and rejoice in me. See, Paul's in prison. He didn't know if maybe they're going to cut his head off. But he was rejoicing no matter what. Now, verse 19, But I trust the Lord Jesus to send Timothy shortly to you, that I also may be of good cheer when you know your state. Or I have no, I have no man like mine. There's no one around me that thinks like Timothy, who naturally cares for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. But you know the know the proof of him that is that as a son with the Father he has served with me in the gospel. Him therefore I hope to send presently, so soon as I see how I will go with go with me. See how it will go with me. Let me let's let's narrow that down to 2018. You know, I'm not in jail, thank God, not in prison. But I really pray about Lord, these people need to hear somebody besides me. Who can I get? I'll never forget one time I I got really excited about getting so so and so and the Lord said, no, I want you to get Bob trying to. I said, I love Bob, but that's not who I want. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know if I'm just thick-headed or what, but I don't move too quickly in those things. I wait till it just sticks with me for, for weeks on end. It just can't get rid of it. And I want this other person, the Lord said, get Bob. So I just said, okay. I submit. I'll get Bob. I wasn't really excited about it because I wanted these other people. But Bob came and had a tremendous meeting. It all worked out perfectly. It just works out perfectly when we get God's man. Now, here's a different, little different scenario. Paul's in prison. Timothy's his sidekick. And he says, I'm going to send him. I'm in prison. I can't get to you, but I'm going to send Timothy. Well, I'm not in prison, but sometimes I need to, I need to get somebody else to come in here and share so uh, it's been in my heart to have Bob Sanchez again. And I really want to have him, especially for our young people right now. And it's been really pressing on me. And I it stayed in my gut now, or not my gut, but it stayed in my innermost being for several months. So this week I just texted him. I said, I really need you. I think the church needs you. What dates do you have? So he sent me three dates. Well, two of them didn't work at all. Two of them did, and I said, it was February. And I said, but remember, we have a weather problem. And I didn't want him to come with 10 inches of snow. But I really felt like he needed to come quickly. And um, so I sent him a text this morning. I said, February is going to work better for us. But... Uh, we have a weather problem, it's your call. If you want to come with that in mind, come on. So we're tentatively looking at 22nd, 23rd, 24th for Bob, for Rob Sanchez. Anyway, so I don't know till what he's going to do about that till I probably probably on my phone now. But anyway, we'll see. But that's kind of the way the Lord works with me. I don't just have a meeting to have a meeting. I just wait till somebody God put somebody in my heart. It isn't always who I wanted. But this uh, Dennis James will be here in, in, in uh, January. And I, I, I felt like having him, but didn't know when. And, and uh, we kind of got together, and he said he could come then, and I said, that's fine. He'd just be here for Sunday morning only. But, you know, it's just, it's kind of like Paul sitting in Timothy. I'm not in prison, but I send these guys, bring these guys in that to be a blessing to you and say something, maybe say it a little differently. I know in the times past that I remember one time I preached a series for about six weeks on a certain subject and stayed with it, read the same scripture every week, week after week after week. We had a, a guest speaker, 
right after that. And he kind of shared along the same lines. And one of the people in this church who don't go here anymore, they move away, they said, you know what the Lord showed me today? <laughs> I was so excited. That's what he showed you. It's what I've been preaching for six weeks. But somebody else could say it a little differently, and they got it. That's the point. I wasn't jealous. I'm just happy they got it. <laughs> you know? I must be chopped liver here. <laughs> anyway. Let's finish this up. Where are we at? Uh, 22. But you know the proof of him, speaking of Timothy, that as a son with a father he has served with me in the gospel. Him, therefore, I hope to send presently, so shall so soon as I see how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I might that I might also myself shall come. Yet I suppose it necessary to send to you a pepper out. Hallelujah. What? Epaphroditus, my brother and companion in labor and fellow, fellow soldier, but your messenger that he ministered to my want. Epaphroditus, how is it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he is from the church of Philippi, and he had already went to Paul. Paul sent him back now. <clears throat> said, uh, For he longed after you and was full of heaviness because he had heard that he had been sick. For indeed he was sick nigh to death, but God had mercy on him, not not on, on him only, but also, but on me, also, lest I should have sorrow of, upon sorrow. I sent him, therefore, the more carefully, that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and that I may be the less sorrowful. Because if he had died, Paul's in prison, he said that would have added to my sorrow. I'd have sorrow upon sorrow. But now that he's better, I'm sending him back to you, receive him, therefore, in the Lord with all gladness. And hold such in reputation, and hold such in rep reputation. Hallelujah! I can't get these glasses just right. Because the work of, the, of Christ, he was nigh to death, not regarding his life, to supply your lack of service toward me. This, uh, we're going to learn in the next chapter something that you did this morning. You're already ahead of chapter 3. But we don't have to help Caleb. We don't have to help that family. But as you give that offering, the next chapter says, God will supply your needs. As Christians, we, we quote that, my God will supply all my needs according to riches of glory. But we don't understand how that happened because they went and supplied to Paul, he said, because you've done that. So I'm believing every cent that you all place in these baskets is going to be added to your own account. Father, we just lift up this offering to you for Kaylee, going to Thailand, and for the family that's in need of three children. Father, we just, I was talking to the lady as she wept, because ch so choked up she could hardly answer me out of a grateful heart she said you don't have to do this we know we don't have to but Lord this is what you put in our heart we want to touch this community and we want to touch Kaylee's life since her dad's not a part of her life her mother's in the porn industry or we can we can supply something her that shows Lord that she's loved beyond measure Lord I just I don't know how it feels to have a mom and dad that don't care I just can't hardly imagine how it be since I had a loving father and mother but someone here may have been in the same situation Lord I remember Sister Sned and tell him how her mother didn't want her. When she was born at home, she put her in a dresser drawer hoping she'd die. But her older sister came along and took her out. Kept her alive. That's hard for me to grasp, Lord, but I know there's people that have done these kind of things. We just, we bless Kayla, we bless this family, Lord. 
in Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for the tithes and offerings that have been placed in this other basket. Thank you, Lord, that we can bless other people. We're not just thinking about ourselves, but about others. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just lift your name on high today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Wait on the Spirit.
Mike Danny had something okay, to say okay. to that. Peyton was born at 23 and a half weeks, and so great. Everything so to grow up to be what he is today. Yes. And, and, and they they said he wasn't seen his left eye. We went to the eye doctor, had his vision checked. We could make that print up on there with with with, with, with his glasses and then we got cream in his eyes. Amen. 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 the 16th coming up real close and Dr. Yoder is going to be on the platform along with a number of his singers so it's a, it's a service you don't want to miss and on the 20th Parker Pruitt is going to be having prayer and healing service <coughs> I would really encourage you to be there. I enjoyed it very much last time. The 30th, happy birthday party here at church. And we're going to serve lunch and celebrate the birth of a great man. The 6th, Dennis James will be here, 6th of January. And there's going to be a lot of things happen in the meantime. Page had a good message yesterday. I got to hear a little bit of it. If you want a copy of it, of the DVD, DVD you let me know, and I'll see that you get one. Now, Paige, being a CEO, she has the responsibility of employees, and uh, she has to interview new employees. So if you're looking for a job and you're going to be interviewed, here's something you need to keep in mind. Qualifications. The interviewer greets the next applicant for the job of night watchman. His first question is, what are your qualifications for the job of night watchman? The applicant replies, even the slightest noise immediately wakes me up. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Let's all stand. If you fail to remember to place some money in Paula's hand last Sunday, be sure and do this today before she leaves. All right. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.